I used to think time would heal. But compounding seconds stole hours from my biological clock. Broken faces exposed the depth of my dysfunction. Overwhelmed with emptiness, my barren soul became a beacon for guilty bystanders. Weighty deceptions made hope swing out of reach like an unruly pendulum. Back and forth, I went back and forth, sometimes well, sometimes well on my way to being unwell again. I opted for digital pleasures when hours handed me loneliness to work with. Ten-digit temptations threatened to pull me back into cycles I clawed my way out of in times past. My relationship with relationships was fractured. The antique models I so treasured proved to be less valuable than some made them seem. Clockwise movement revealed how foolish I'd been. The lines I rehearsed regarding my self-worth reversed years of godly counsel. What I repeated repeatedly robbed me of precious pieces of peace. It was time to surrender my understanding. Repetition was trying to teach me lessons I just wasn't getting. One thing I did learn, though, time doesn't heal, but the author of time does. It's kind of crazy. I learned best by repetition. So when they ask me why it's so hard for me to forget, it's because you've forgiven me again and again. My heart's mind has mnemonic devices tattooed of your goodness. I remember Senora Diaz classes. She taught us to sing the days of the week in Spanish like lunes y martes, ay, ay. And I've never forgotten. And I'll never forget how you sing over me with lullabies of deliverance. How you've kept my mind in perfect peace protected me when it seemed that my helmet of salvation was holding on by a thread. Your word has always been the safety net that has kept me from falling. And I know we aren't ignorant to Satan devices and your word helps me remember that the greater one inside me is stronger than vices. I went from flashbacks to flashcards reminding me I'm accepted in the beloved. And every time I think of where you brought me from, it becomes more impossible for me to forget. It amazes me how an infinite mind forgets my sins as soon as I repent. It's kind of crazy. Oftentimes I felt like the walls were caving in. Like I was stuck in a space in a moment in time that had no beginning or end. And suddenly, in that moment, my palms are sweaty, my eyes grow dim, and my heart is racing. And before you know it, I'm hyperventilating. And there I am, breathing in this bag. And in that moment, I have a moment of clarity that that same brown paper bag is what put me in this space in the first place. Now I'm angry. And I just couldn't rationalize how something that was killing me was simultaneously helping me survive. I was conflicted. I guess that's why I made so many poor decisions. I made poor decisions, but listen, because when the author rises, he authorizes certain things to be written in our stories. And then he ruachs me, fills me with his breath, and says that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, not even the ones I turn on myself. So from that moment, if you're wondering how I made it, I promise I'll vent it later. But I will say, he didn't just save my life, but he restored my faith. It's kind of crazy. Call me crazy, but lately I've been thinking that maybe it would be better if I held on to all of this hurt. After all, I have learned how to harness the power of mental pressures and suppress the rumblings of these feelings like who needs therapy anyway? Who needs healing? Certainly not me, not I, not us, no. Us have ice in these veins, that's why we be cold for no reason. Throwing stiff shoulders to block receptions and I be praying that somebody see when I'm open because it's not that often. Just like it's not often that my tears find exit, but when they do escape, they tend to run like scared toddlers, dodging generational shadows, AKA daddy issues and mama dramas. And I know that they say that I don't have to fear, but all I know is these valleys. Is it crazy that sometimes us be scared of freedom? Would it be crazy to turn away a chance at unconditional love? That's the ultimate come up for a heart that's been broken down for so long. Would it be crazy to be invited to a grand feast and I not at least taste and see a piece of peace and what it means to be free enough to be free to hear grace spoken from the lips of the author of deliverance himself if turning away Jesus is crazy us don't want to be crazy no more 
Us wanna take off these shoes of oppression so that we can walk past the pain of our past and into a path that may leave others scratching their temples as if them not accepting Jesus wouldn't be crazy also and come to think of it, not accepting his offer, that would be kinda crazy, right?